from my tattoo appointment. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, so the artist and I did a trade. I will link their um, Instagram in the description. I traded them this like concrete table that I made and a blanket that I designed. You can find all my blankets in my shop online. You can see that also in the, the description. But yeah, and then in return, I got a custom tattoo that I'm so excited about. I'll show it to you right now. So it has the Sanoderm on it right now, but it's this Ouroboros tattoo, which is the snake eating its tail. It's a symbol of kind of regenerative life, eternity, life cycles. It kind of is a reflection of like balance and cycles. Um, but I've been wanting this tattoo and this placement for like three years and I didn't know who I wanted to do it. I didn't know what exactly I wanted it to look like. But yeah, Masha just did such an amazing job. I'm so happy with it. And I think it also like looks nice with my surrender also. I feel like at some point I'm definitely gonna want like some symmetry and I kind of picture like another like maybe coin or spiral or something as well like on this shoulder. But for now I love this. I love the placement that it's kind of poking out from the tank top. Yay! I'm so happy. I've literally been thinking about this for years. So it's really snowing out there. It's been like snowing nonstop for the whole day. I feel like every other day it's we've just been getting like a dump of snow. Um, and I'm happy I got out, but I think I just want to be inside the rest of the day. I just want to be cozy. So I think I'm going to make some tea. Just like decompress a little bit, have, just like slowly transition back into being in my house. I had a little performance video piece idea that I've been thinking about for a while now and I think I'm gonna try to shoot that right now. Or not right now, I'm gonna try to shoot that today while we still have natural daylight because I kind of need the natural light for it. Um, and then, you know what, I think it would be nice if I finished up the pieces that I started yesterday. Let me show you something. I can't remember if I showed this on camera or not, I maybe I didn't, but I have these pieces of canvas that I just cut up into different sized strips. And then I used acrylic and water to kind of like stain them in different various, in various like beige shades. So they're all like a little different. Some are a little bit more like yellow. Um, some are a little bit more like cream or tan colored. Um, but I wanna just try doing kind of like a patchwork canvas. So I just wanna glue these to a canvas. Um, just cause I feel like I like the texture. I just wanna try it out. Yeah, so the plan is to take these different strips and just kind of almost collage them onto a canvas um, in, different like patterns or I don't know I just want to try I like the different shades of beige and I like the texture of them so yeah I want to try pasting those onto a canvas and just see what that looks like I've been really loving texture I really like te like texture things and messy things and yeah a lot more like abstract i feel like i was doing a lot of illustrative drawing for a really long time and as much as i loved it at the time i th i think i had a hard time like connecting myself to the work because i was like why am i drawing this why am i drawing this scenario or this symbol and i don't know i guess in the moment like i was very into medieval art and the symbolism behind medieval art and i i still really love all of that but Recently, I have been enjoying more the side of things that are more experimental, more textured, like I was saying, and kind of creating without a specific outcome in mind. That has been really helpful for my creation and for the process of it. I have so much more fun when I don't have an end goal in mind. And I feel like that was a really big block for a long time. I still kind of feel that way sometimes, but I feel like that was a really big block because I wouldn't want to experiment because I was like, oh, I'm gonna waste all my materials, but it's not wasteful. It's 
it's a stepping stone to something else and then you can also if you don't like the piece in the end you can always recycle it and use it in a different way or paint over it or whatever so you know the time is not lost the efforts not lost even if you make something out of exploration and you don't like the outcome you can always try again and you can always do something different with it you know um and again like i said it's like a stepping stone to maybe more towards what you are looking for in your creation and your process um so through all of this experimentation i found that i really love working with different mediums, working with the crackle paste has been really fun, a lot of layering of paint, that's been really enjoyable. I love working with the concrete and plaster. Um, and the raw canvas, I really prefer working on raw canvas than primed canvas. I think the, I like the way that the paint sits, it really absorbs um, in a way that I like, and I like that it gets kind of stained. Um, especially when I dilute the paint. Um, like this was a really deep dark brown paint that was diluted with water and now it just kind of looks like a dirty bandage, which I love that. I don't know, I just think that's really cool and I love the texture of it. So yeah, that's my process right now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make a little tea and just like sit for a minute, read my book. I've been like processing a lot of like internal things today. So I feel like I need a little, another like meditation. I didn't film my like full morning routine, but um, I've already done my like daily meditation, but I feel like I just need a little something extra right now. I'm so excited about this tattoo. I'm like looking at it in the viewfinder and I am so pumped. Okay, I'm gonna make a little tea and then I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Oh my God. This tea is so nice. It reminds me of my mom. Also having a little bit of leftover Indian food that I ordered last night. A little bit of like cauliflower. I put some lettuce in there also. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. So I'm gonna try using this camera. This is the Sony Cybershot. I got this when I was like 13. Um, but I think I can get the same kind of film appearance, video appearance that I'm looking for. Cause I'm not looking for like a hugely high definition video. Um, I kind of like that it's a little bit more messy and like kind of sketchy looking. So I'm gonna try this camera instead cause I think it'll be a little bit more steady than this one was. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna give that a shot. Also, like, the purpose of this, like, performance video that I'm doing, the purpose of it is mostly, like, it's mostly playful. I just have this, like, image in my mind of, like, hands behind a white wall, and I thought it'd be funny to have the hands, like, be playing a game where they're pointing to each other, and they kind of switch off, and they, you know, halfway through counting the fingers, they switch, and, you know, the other hand has to go down and count the fingers. I liked the interaction between the two, so I thought I would try doing like a little short performance video just to film it. I feel like visually it might be interesting. Um, I don't know, it's, it's interesting to me at least. I like simple kind of like gestural movement vi videos and like performance pieces like that. Another idea of doing a performance where it's all just an instruction based movement, so like moving your feet and the prompt would be like one step forward one step back, tiptoe. And then like, that could be anything. I don't know, yeah, like try it yourself. Like what would that look like to you? Like one step forward, one step back, tiptoe. And like, are you doing it really slowly? Are you doing it really exaggerated? Are you taking big steps, you know? So 
yeah, I'm just kind of like playing around with these ideas and like workshopping them. Oh, I get a much wider angle, okay. Okay, like right there is kind of the sweet spot. I don't like that I'm wearing nail polish in it. It just like takes me out of it, kind of. I don't know, I want my hands to be like blank slates, you know? It's good. It's good, it's what I envision. I feel like I might do it another time, but for now it's good. I feel like I might try to do like a different variation. Again, with no nail polish, because I just feel like the nail polish, like I want to see my nail beds. I want it to just be completely natural. That's just like an aesthetic preference, it's not a big deal. You know what, while I have the camera out, I might try to film something else. Just some like gestural movement stuff. A couple weeks ago, I was just trying out different like um, arm, sh arm, face, body shape, making different shapes with the arms and making like, um, just like interesting connections between parts of the body and the face so like touching the nose in a certain way that creates some sort of like angular shape um, and I just liked how that looked and I liked the interaction with the body and it being kind of like a sculpture um, that's just kind of like what was floating around in my mind so I'm gonna try to create that with this um, yeah. yeah, so these are some of the examples that I had. I was just trying this out while I was sitting at my desk. Um, so this is one example. Same with the mouth. I think touching the mouth is really beautiful. I like, I mean, I've done this in other work, but just a little hug and like caressing my face. I like this one, hanging my mouth open. <laughs> um, I don't know if this makes sense to anyone out there, but I really hope it does. Uh, I'm gonna wear a turtleneck because I don't want my tattoos to show. Again, I just like, I want the body to feel like type kind of neutral and like non, without identity in a way. I don't want the tattoos to like distract from the shape that I'm trying to create. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Mm -hmm. 